Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating and interpreting a scatterplot matrix using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we want to examine the relationships between variables, and it's helpful if we have several variables to see those relationships all at the same time. And that's where a scatterplot matrix is particularly useful. So looking at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view, I have an ID variable, and there are 45 participants, an independent variable program that has three levels, individual counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual, and three dependent variables. And these are all reported as T-scores. T-scores have a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. We have severity, functioning, and motivation. And we'll presume these data are gathered from a substance use treatment facility where these type of variables would be of interest. And then I have a variable named RV1, random variable 1, which is a random variable generated by the rv.normal function in SPSS. So the random values that should follow a normal distribution. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways to generate a scatterplot matrix. And the first method, I'm going to go into graphs, chart builder. And then you can see down here under gallery, have choose from. And there's several different types of charts available. I'm going to move down to scatter dot. And you can see here there are eight different charts to choose from under scatter dot. And I want the one named Scatterplot Matrix. So I'm going to drag this icon into the chart preview. And you can see it just says Scatter Matrix down here. And that's where I'm going to load the variables of interest. So first I'm going to load uh, severity, functioning, and motivation together. Just those three. And then I'm going to click OK. So you will notice that all the combinations are represented here. So along the x-axis you have severity, functioning, and motivation. And similarly along the y-axis you have severity, functioning, and motivation. Now we can interpret the scatterplot matrix directly from this view. Uh, but it's a little easier if we double click we can make a few changes to this. Uh, one is I want to add a fit line at total. And I want to leave it as linear, which is the default fit line. And then under chart size, I want to increase the size of this chart a little bit. You can see the height is 375 by default here. I'm going to make this, uh, four, let's make this 450. Make that a little larger. I'm going to maintain the aspect ratio there. So I'll click Apply there. And then under Options, you can see there's an option here, Show Charts in the Diagonal. So what that means is if you look, move this out of the way, if you look here at the scatterplot matrix, there's no chart in the diagonals because this would be, for example, where severity is in the y-axis and it's also in the x-axis so there's no there's no chart that would be in here by default similarly functioning functioning and motivation motivation there's nothing there so you have two choices for this for so show, show charts in the diagonal you have a histogram or normal curve so I'm going to let it stay as default, which is histogram, and then close this. So now you can see the chart is larger, and it has the histograms in the diagonal. So these histograms represent the variable in the y-axis. So this is the histogram for severity. Here in the center is the histogram for functioning, and the one down here in the bottom right is the histogram for motivation. And just to demonstrate this quickly, I'll go to Chart Builder. 
and I'm going to reset this, go down to histogram, and drag in a simple histogram, and then put severity as the x-axis, and click OK. So if you look up here at this histogram, the general pattern of it here, and move down to the one I just created, you can see they are identical. So now taking a look at the relationships between the variables and interpreting what they mean. So if we look here at functioning in the y-axis and severity in the x-axis, you can see that the line moves from the top left to the bottom right. So that there is a strong negative correlation between these two variables. As severity increases, functioning decreases. And similarly, as severity increases, motivation decreases. Although, as you can see here, the relationship is not quite as strong as, is the, as was the case with severity and functioning. Then looking at functioning and motivation, we can see that as functioning increases, motivation increases, and, of course, viewed another way with motivation on the x-axis and function on the y-axis, as motivation increases, functioning increases. So the scatterplot matrix tells us about the relationship, but doesn't tell us anything about causality. It's not suggesting that motivation causes a change in functioning, but simply that there's a relationship between the two. And in this case, a strong positive relationship between these two variables. So let's go back to graphs and chart builder. I'm going to reset this, move back to scatter dot and matrix, a scatter plot matrix. I'm going to load in severity and hold down control, functioning, motivation, and random variable one. So I'm going to drag them all down into the chart preview going to click OK. And as you can see, by default, because we have four variables, so we have 16 uh, cells here, this is a little difficult to read because of the size. So I'm going to double click. And uh, first, I'm going to change the chart size to 450. And click Apply. And then I'm going to add the fit line of total. Under options, I'm going to display the histogram. So this is a little easier read now because it's larger. And the only change here is I've added the random variable. So we wouldn't expect a random variable to be associated with these other variables to a statistically significant degree. And as you can see, by adding the random variable, if we look at the random variable here uh, on the x-axis and move up, the line is, it, it moves downward a little bit, but there's really no relationship there with motivation and uh, not much of one with functioning and uh, even less of a relationship with severity. And of course, the histogram down here in this bottom right cell is for the random variable. I'm going to move back to the data view and show you another way to do this. You can go to graphs instead of chart builder, you can go to legacy dialogues and you can select scatter dot from here and you can see it gives you these choices and you want to select matrix scatter and click define. So if we want the same scatter plot matrix that I had before, just hold down control and select uh, severity, function, motivation, and random variable one, move them over, and click OK. And you can see, of course, it's smaller. It doesn't have the lines and histograms. Again, that's changed just by double clicking. And we can add all these features in fairly quickly. So we have the same result 
just using the legacy dialogues instead of the chart builder. So by interpreting the, the scatterplot matrix and looking at the individual scatter plots, we have an idea about the relationships between these variables. Let's take a look at that under Analyze, Correlate by Variant. And I'm just going to throw all four of these variables we've been working with into variables. Under Options, I'm just going to add Means and Standard Deviations. And then uh, click OK. And we can see that between severity and functioning, there's a statistically significant negative correlation, as we had suspected. And then we have a statistically significant negative correlation between severity and motivation. And a non-statistically significant result for the random variable, again, which would make sense. We'd have no reason to believe the random variable would be associated with severity in any uh, strong way, and certainly not in a statistically significant way. And if we look down functioning motivation, we have similar results, non-statistically significant results when compared to the random variable. When we look at functioning and severity, uh, with the same uh, value here, negative 0.812. But if we look at function and motivation, something we didn't see up here, we can see that is also statistically significant, and it's a, a positive relationship, positive correlation. So these correlations confirm what we would have suspected from the scatterplot matrix, uh, strong negative relationships between severity and functioning and severity and motivation, and a strong positive relationship between function and motivation and really no uh, relationship, uh, not a statistically significant relationship anyway, between the random variable and any of the other three, severity, functioning, or motivation. I hope you found this video in creating and interpreting a scatterplot matrix using SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.